I came up with a new theme song for Bora. Feel free to take it if you're watching this, Bora. Bora, 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 the exposer. She is super cool and will expose ya. Grab your RJ. Let's go. Jump in. Vamanos. Bora leads the way. Hey, hey, hey. Bora, Bora. I'm sorry, Bora. You know BTS. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Landon and we are here again today for another Bora City Magazine video. Yeah, my amazing patrons voted this week in my BTS poll to watch another one. And this one is called, Why the Music Industry is Terrified of BTS. Honestly, you can leave it right there. End of the sentence. Done, we know why. Because BTS is BTS. You can't spell best without BTS, bitch. Okay, you might have to rearrange a few letters, but it still works. Anyway, today we're gonna jump right in and see what Bora has to say. Because I know it's gonna be nothing but straight facts. Here we go. This is why the music industry is terrified of BTS. Yeah, they should be. Bitch, even on hiatus, bitch. Even serving in the military, bitch. They're still scared. On April 3rd, Jimin of BTS became the first South Korean soloist to debut at number one on the world's biggest Baby, music congrats. Track, the Billboard Hot 100. His song Like Crazy became the seventh song ever by a Korean act to reach number one. The other six songs are BTS's songs. So all of the Korean songs that reach number one are from BTS and BTS members only. Stop. Actually, all the songs from Asian artists that debut at number one are from BTS and BTS Stop. members only. And believe it or not, this is extremely scary for the music industry. Since BTS entered the Hot 100's top 10 for the first time in 2018, the music industry has done everything in their power to prevent them from getting number one songs. Yep. But why does BTS keep succeeding despite literally being one of the most sabotaged artists in the industry? Say and it why again. would all these music entities work together to harm one artist? Isn't this simply paranoia from BTS fans? The no. industry's actions say something very clear. BTS cannot be at the top and they don't try to hide this anymore. Everyone can see the industry's obvious intentions by looking at the times they come up with a weird new rule that prevents BTS from succeeding in their charts. Just look at the latest one. New rules. Jimmy's song Like Crazy got a number one in its first week and it was predicted to stay in the top 10 for its second week. Jimin was achieving the same debut numbers of Olivia Rodrigo but without the industry's support. And this obviously was not the industry's plan. So Billboard decided to change one specific rule that benefits Jimin, so him and only him can fall from the charts, and the rest of it stays exactly the same. It's still unknown what Billboard did exactly to make the best-selling song of the week go from 100,000 sales to 14,000 sales. Maybe Billboard didn't just want Jimin to not be in the top 10, they wanted him to free fall. So why filter 60% of the song sales so we can fall from the top 10, when you can cut 90% of the song sales and make him have the biggest fall ever. Maybe they didn't just want to take his accomplishment away, they wanted to send a message. Let me just say this too, the fact that Billboard came in and started cutting actual sales versus streams is something that we're just gonna jump right in and say bitch is fucked up because what day and age did streams count more than sales? What day and age, what point in time did somebody putting something on repeat on a streaming service mean more than somebody getting in a car, going to a store, purchasing an album, coming back, or going to iTunes, going in, typing in their credit card number and buying one? I mean, no, I'm like, I'm not old. I know you don't have to type it every time, but like still, you see what I'm saying? Like sales should be a 100% percent boost like at one sale i know that what is it like 10 streams or something like that counts as one sale once i don't know whatever that number is it needs to be tripled quadrupled because a sale is so much more important just saying they wanted to show who is really in charge not the fans consuming the music but the industry itself this is not the first time they've done this whenever they want a song to fall on the charts they apply a new rule that applies to one artist and then they forget about this rule for the following weeks until once again an artist they don't want to be at the top is at the top so they apply one specific rule that can help them fall allegedly of course because the only explanation to delete 90 percent of a song's sales is for Luminate, which tracks these numbers, to track each payment by looking at IP addresses and credit card information. And that's illegal and Billboard would never, of course. of course. So why would the whole industry go out of their ways to prevent one artist from succeeding? Because they're better than all your faves. 
I said it, and I'm not BTS's afraid. BTS's biggest advantage and disadvantage is that they are successful without the industry support. Yep. And the industry has built an environment where you can only win if you accept to play the industry's game. Industry In plans. other words, the industry chooses its winners from the very beginning and sabotages other players who find alternative ways to defeat others at their own game. I Love would you, say Nikki. that the biggest artists who do Sorry. this are BTS, and it's because of ARMY's power. BTS is not simply a one-hit artist, they are at the core of pop culture and they did this without industry support not the k-pop industry support not the western industry support bts were able to get to the top of the music industry okay pause real quick i know this is y'all know me with bora videos i'm gonna keep talking i'm gonna keep talking number one i want to say i 100 agree with what you're saying bora nikki is a different story i feel like nikki was the come up i grew up in louisiana and i know lil wayne's story and i know lil wayne finding nikki and drake and stuff like that like I'm, that's one of my success stories that i put on top with bts nikki minaj but with that being said i also wanted to say Every time I see them at the AMAs here doing this speech right here, like all I can think about is I was there. And I think that like for the rest of my life, anytime I see like a still from this, a clip from this, I'm going to be like, I was there. And that was like <laughs> a moment in my life I'll never forget. I love them so much. Ugh. They only deserve the best and they deserve this artist of the year. So I was so excited to be able to be there and cheer for them without the music industry making a profit out of them. That's why BTS are a problem. That's what the industry cannot stand. Just compare Psy's situation with BTS's situation. When Gangnam Style by Psy became globally popular, the music industry was not afraid of a Korean singer becoming popular in the West because everyone assumed it was a one time exactly. thing. But when BTS became globally popular, the story was different. The Western industry was first okay with them being a one-hit artist. They were fine with BTS being the weird phenomenon that people will grow out of after some time. But when they Never. did disappear and they actually started defeating Western artists, the music industry got worried. As when they I first should. heard something Korean had exploded in America, I got worried. The entertainment industry is usually <laughs> happy to sell it. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to pause again already, but like, you know, sometimes when somebody says stuff like, oh, and then the whole industry was shaking, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> Bora said the whole industry was worried and then played a receipt saying the whole industry is worried. Bitch, the fuck, the fuck. Celebrate international and independent artists and scream diversity as long as one, it's a one-time thing, or two, artists obey the industry's rules and give the industry some profit. The Oscars were fine celebrating Bong Joon-ho's movie because even though they don't profit from the movie's success, at least Bong Joon-ho is not an artist releasing multiple successful projects a year. Parasite was a one-time thing that indirectly could help his other movies from American production companies. Mm -hmm. The Emmys were happy giving Squid Games multiple awards because at least the show was being produced by Netflix and the actors were happy to accept offers from the Western industry. In other words, the Western industry got benefits from the success of a foreign series, so it was fine to celebrate them. Everything Everywhere All at Once was highly celebrated by the industry, but at the end of the day, it's an American movie by American directors, American writers, and American production companies. In the end, the movie's success is the American industry's profit. But singers are different, because they constantly release music and their success can become constant support from fans. So an artist's success can rely on the fans more than it relies on the industry itself. And that is not something the industry wants. This is why a song like Despacito, which was already the most popular song worldwide before the Justin Bieber feature, was not recognized at all by Billboard or any other entity from the American music really? industry. They only accepted the song as a global success when Justin Bieber and his American label were involved in making a profit out Shame. of it. This is why the Billboard Music Awards were happy to invite Psy to their ceremony, but they never gave Gangnam Style the biggest song of the year and number one. Many factors prevented Psy from achieving this. To start, Psy never left his Korean company to fully sign with an American label, so his music never got proper industry support. Also, at the time Billboard didn't count YouTube views as streams, making it obvious how the charts didn't reflect what the public was actually listening to. Even to this day and with many chart adjustments, the Billboard charts are just a reflection of the artists the industry wanted to succeed from the very beginning. Of course, there are exceptions like Gangnam Style, Old Town Road and some organic TikTok hits. But how far they go and how far they'll keep being recognized depends on the artist's willingness to shake hands with industry people. And again, they don't care if you're a foreign artist, as long as they get to make a profit out of you. But if you don't comply with them, you will get your moment of fame and then be completely shut down from the music industry. Here's how they do it. 
Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is, too. Like Boris saying, they'll see you come up, they'll see you be successful on your own terms, but then if you don't sign to their terms, you won't have any more support going forward. And not that they're like, I mean, maybe they are with BTS and stuff, but now that they're like trying to completely sabotage you specifically, but they will give the other support to the other artists to get them to the number ones where they're making more profit off of it. So it's not like, hey, BTS is here, let's go. Well, let me let me not say that because I don't even know what goes on behind the scenes and maybe they do call up people and be like, knock them down on the billboards, cancel out these streams. Like, I don't know exactly what happens, but all I do know is that it's always the case that every time BTS gets number one, there's some type of rule. Oh, randomly comes from nowhere showing how manipulative they are of this and how BTS was just doing their thing. And the thing about BTS too is they'll, 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 they'll just keep doing their thing. They're not going to like protest it and stuff like that. That's why we're here. We got to show the world what's happening. The industry endorses its own artists on streaming platforms like Spotify by applying multiple subtle methods. One way is by putting the artist's desire to succeed at the best spots of curated playlists. Yep. The biggest one is the Today's Top Hits playlist, which doesn't actually show Today's Top Hits. That is the ugly, colorless Top 50 playlist. Today's Top Hits is what Spotify wants to be the Top Hits. Millions of streams from the general public come from this playlist, so being a part of it, it it's a vital part of a song's promotion. Spotify says that they decide which artists get to be at what? the top. If you do look here too, let me turn my, my subs off. I'll show you too. So just looking from this, Escapism, Players, Boys a Liar, and Rima's Calm Down are ones that were pretty much organically from TikTok. Maybe not the Selena Gomez feature, but even songs like Kill Bill got popular on TikTok. Flowers was popular on TikTok. Like Chemicals, I don't even know if I've even heard that by Post Malone, honestly. And I'm a Posty fan. But if things like this, that shows you that like today's top hits, all the TikTok people, and I'm sure that's the companies that just signed the TikTok people paying tons of money to have them there of the playlist or at the cover based on their intuition and expertise in music trends. But many find these arbitrary decisions suspicious, since Spotify loves giving this special treatment to certain artists from certain labels. To think that artists from certain powerful labels are paying their way to the cover of this playlist may not be a crazy thing to think. Spotify also takes advantage of the automatic autoplay feature. When you stop listening to an album you like, they will immediately play you a song they want you to stream. Mm -hmm. More recently, Spotify updated their homepage to a TikTok-like feed that lets you scroll down endlessly with songs and music videos being automatically played. So while some artists get millions of streams added because of passive streams from curated playlists and the accidental streams from the autoplay feature, BTS get millions of streams deleted because fandom behavior of willingly listening to a song every day is considered bot behavior. So if you compare BTS's unfiltered streams with their filter streams, you will find out that they are the ones with the highest rate of filter streams. <laughs> Jimin said, I'm your filter, bitch. Don't filter me no more. It's so true though. I, whenever I first heard that like just listening to a song multiple times a day, even if you have songs in between it, can still be considered bot behavior. Bitch, the fuck? Like that's what got me so hype. I'm like, we're not bots, you're just scared of us. That's what it is. Their streams get deleted more than any other artist. There are even days when their streams are cut in half, mm -hmm. but Spotify is not the only platform doing this. Some of BTS's biggest waves of new fans came from YouTube. Their music videos get so many views that BTS started breaking every YouTube Guinness record records, imaginary, bitch. time and time again. So every time BTS broke a record, YouTube changed their algorithm to find ways to delete Another what rule change. or inorganic view. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I turned these back off, but let me put these back on. But it's pretty clear that their algorithms never worked properly. That's why they keep changing it every time BTS gets a new record. So just to talk about the latest YouTube algorithm change, I'm going to talk about the most successful music videos from a Korean app so far this year. According to YouTube, it's this video. But according to the massive wave of new BTS Fans you can find on Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube itself. It's on the street by J Hope of BTS featuring J Cole and Like Crazy by Jimmy of BTS. But both of these videos get millions of views deleted every day. It's common for YouTube to do this in the first 24 hours with every music video, since it's the day they get the most views. As days pass, fans stop mass streaming and YouTube stops deleting views. But this is BTS, so YouTube is still deleting their music video views 
today, weeks after they were released. You may still think that YouTube is just deleting fake views, but it's simply impossible for a random gaming interview to get more views in its first hours than an official and anticipated gaming music video. It's not crazy to believe that YouTube disproportionately deletes views on BTS's music videos specifically. Mm -hmm. Let's be logical for a second. These K-pop acts are not bigger than BTS, and that's okay. But yeah. it's not okay for BTS to get their views deleted every hour while these other microscopical songs get views added because people are forced to stream their music videos as YouTube ads. On the other hand, because I of didn't know about YouTube videos, ads. BTS recently received one of its I got YouTube premium. <laughs> I ain't gonna play with y'all. Somebody told me one day, I can't remember who it was. Was it Drifty? Somebody said it. But they were like, once you go to YouTube premium, you will never go back. And I have never gone back. So I don't know what's going on with the ads, but do the ads actually count as a stream if you listen to an ad? Because if it does, I'm gonna punch the screen. Biggest waves of new fans. Probably the biggest since 2021. Yet YouTube wants us to believe that these are the real numbers. Global takeover group BTS in the studio. <laughs> They are. Probably the most fraudulent practice in the music industry. Oh, we know about the radio. radio we went over that video. At least with streaming platforms, there is this sense of autonomy. Streaming platforms may choose the artists they want to be at the top. They may recommend you their songs and music videos time and time again. They may even steal a stream from you because of their autoplay features and paid ads. But at least there are ways to fight this. Armies may not get BTS ads and recommendations, but they can look for the songs and videos themselves. Armies may not get all of their streams content, but at least the industry recognizes about half of them. But what has no solution except to pay is radio. Payola. Radio mysteriously chooses certain songs to get played and stays with those, giving them millions of radio spins and points to- Can we just, okay, let's look at this real quick, because this is what always hurt my heart too. If you look at sales, look at BTS's Dynamite, okay? 95,000 units sold. Streams, 17 million because they cut them in half. Airplay, 14 million? Compared to somebody that's selling 3.8 thousand, okay? <laughs> and getting 40 million streams. Somebody that's selling 6,000, getting 9 million streams, and Airplay 70 million times? That's exactly how it shows. And then all of a sudden, I feel like one of the rule changes was that radio play counted for more than streams and sales at one point. And I'm like, how the fuck is a radio play gonna count more than somebody going to a store and purchasing an album or a song? Ah! to music charts that will give them a number one. But here you have Jimmy of BTS who has a number one song and millions of radio play requests by fans and still receives zero points from radio. Zero. And this is not even a crazy foreign song that the American general public may reject. This is a mainstream yet nicely produced pop song in English. But this is just reality. It was not in the industry's plans or in their best interest to make like crazy popular. So when it happened, they once again pretended like BTS doesn't exist and continue sabotaging their songs. Life Goes Song was another radio-friendly song by BTS that got a number one on the Hot 100, but they received a total of six spins six from spins. US radio. That's zero points for music. Six spins. And some people are getting 70 million. You see what I'm saying? The fuck? It just pisses me off so much. I'm just like, when I hear numbers like that, like how you gonna tell me a number one song got played on the radio six times? Obviously, it was enough to be number one on the Billboard charts, but you're not gonna put it on the fucking radio? My God. Charts. Dynamite and Butter were number one songs Literally, no excuses for that. That were played on the radio to an yep. extent, but the number of spins were not enough to maintain their number one position. They were only able to stay on the top of the charts because people were streaming and buying their songs. That is the main difference with BTS's songs and the industry songs. If you take the millions of radio spins from the majority of the industry's promoted songs, they wouldn't only have bigger falls than BTS. They would simply not be in the chart at all. Thank you. This is how the industry chooses their success stories from the very beginning. Mass radio we'll watch this video makes too. the song debut look more successful than what it actually is, and therefore it misleads and attracts the general public. If this doesn't work and the general public still rejects the song, the industry doesn't give up. Mass radio play makes an 
successful song stay in the charts with minimal sales and streams from real, real people. people. While this happens, songs like Jimin's, which literally got a number one and millions of people streaming and buying, will still not receive any radio spins. Radio doesn't care about how radio friendly the song is. They don't care about the millions of faithful listeners they would get if they play BTS music. They don't care about the most requested songs. The industry's plans are the industry's plans. This is another thing too. So like, remember I told y'all a long time ago, like one of my life dreams was to be a radio host one day, but fuck the radio. But if somebody's watching this that works at Sirius XM, <laughs> that nobody is, but let me make a K-pop channel. Why can't I not have a K-pop channel? If somebody's watching this from TikTok radio, which I do faithfully listen to, cause I love it. I'm like a lot to y'all. Let me have a K-pop hour. Let me have a K-pop countdown. Let me do something to introduce the world to K-pop more. It's just not fair that I can't go onto like a normal radio and get my K-pop fixed. But what I can do is hear 18 country channels, 25, rap channels, 100,000 pop channels, sports talk, radio talk, Christian talk, everything, but I can't have a little niche for K-pop, I guarantee y'all would make so much from it if y'all just really understood what the people want. The reason why many talk about the industry as a whole is because all of these music entities are interconnected one way or another. Artists and their labels know that being on the billboard charts gives the illusion that the general public is listening to a song. And to get a number one song on this chart, you need streams, sales, and radio play. So music labels, allegedly, pay for all of these radio play, fraudulent streams, and media play because they can be an investment for future real sales and streams. This can the mother song to the this is so random to stop again. I thought the mother song by Megan Trainor was a flop because everybody on my TikTok, on my side of TikTok, was making fun of it, being like, it's a reach girl. It's giving Fergie MILF or whatever that song was that she put out, you know? And to see here that it was considered a sensation, kind of wild to me. <laughs> I don't remember seeing that on my TikTok, but maybe I'm just on the wrong side of TikTok be an investment for real popularity and real listeners. If all of these investments fail to convince the general public and the label is bold enough, they will continue paying for these tactics to stay on the charts while no real people are streaming or buying the song. These failed industry promoted songs that no one is listening to will then be nominated for Grammys with the excuse that they care about quality and not popularity. These Grammys will then elevate the artist and the music label's reputation, and then they will get more money invested in them. This cyclical. money will then be used to buy media play, radio play, streams, and the circle continues. If a massively promoted song or album is successful, the artist may get their investment money back, as well as the obvious Grammys. This will give the artist the most important factor to make money reputation. Allegedly, music labels pay way more money to streaming platforms for promotion than they receive from streams. Interesting. The money paid for radio spends can go from thousands of dollars to multi-million dollar settlements. And getting this investment back as sales is not as common because buying music is not a popular enough practice amongst the general public. It is for BTS fans. rarely make profit from their music. Yeah. They earn money from advances, merchandise, royalties, licensing fees, and concerts. That's why that number one is so important. That's why many would rather not make any profits now and get a Grammy later. It's like being influencers. Their actual content may not make a lot of profit, but the reputation and popularity of their name can get them fashion deals, commercials, and a time slot in a music festival. These are only examples, of course. There are many barriers so and outcomes. Sometimes artists invest in radio play and end up making a lot more money from sales or concerts. Sometimes an artist has a good relationship with the industry for years, and then they stop shaking hands with industry people and they receive zero Grammy nominations for an extremely popular, critically acclaimed album. When it comes to BTS, the Western industry's main interest is ratings and social media engagement because that is direct money for the Western industry. BTS's five Grammy nominations are historic for a number of reasons, but their lack of wins show the obvious message the Grammys are trying to send them. You can't be invited so we have the ratings, but you are not our friends, so you won't win. In the end, the industry has the first and last say. And this doesn't only happen in the Western music industry. You won't believe how much the South Korean music industry tries to sabotage the only artists capable of bringing billions of dollars to their economy. Again, this is because BTS are not part of their elite. The three major music labels in South Korea control the entertainment industry. They have enough power to blacklist artists from independent labels like BTS and make the media downplay their 
achievements. There isn't a common practice of deleting sales like in American music charts, but what they would do is freeze the charts and then apologize for a technical error. So if millions of BTS sales are not counted once again. Uh, this is how the in your home country inside each music industry are interconnected. But that yeah. makes sense too because obviously BTS is going to dominate. So any of the big three or even other smaller labels that are trying to push their artists, push the new era for their artists, they're going to be paying so much money to make sure that BTS doesn't get that number one. And that's why it's always so important. And that's why I always see armies being like, vote, 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 vote. We got to do it ourselves because honestly, at the end of the day, armies are the ones that are doing it, you know? And it's a shame to say, but that just goes to show how dedicated the fans are. You need one another to function. Sometimes they are one and the same. If you thought Billboard and Rolling Stone were at some point competing for who has the best charts, think about how they are both owned by Thanks Media Corporation, which also owns Variety, Deadline, The Hollywood Reporter, and an interest in music <laughs> business worldwide. When I was in LA, I used to pass the building with the PMC all over it, and I would think Purple Marker Chat. <laughs> That's the name of our Discord channel. And I, I had no idea that was the bitches controlling it. I would have done something. <laughs> I used to pass that building all the time. Uh, oh no, okay, all right, all right, hold it together. So BTS is still the biggest group in the world, but they don't have a good relationship with the music industry. Here you will have, guess who? Billboard, Rolling Stone, Variety, and The Hollywood Reporter making a profit out of BTS by selling exclusive photo shoots while at the same time writing negative articles undermining their success. This person said something interesting. Billboard is nothing but an ad selling business, the literal definition of a billboard. So yeah, oh my god, never thought of it like that. The artist Billboard promoted since they end up succeeding Duh. in the Billboard charts. Like I said, there are not many artists that make money from their music, but music sales are still an important factor to get a number one song or album. So they will digitally sell their songs for cents and their albums for only a couple of dollars. This makes a lot of points for charts, but not so much money for the artists. They will also do the classic bundle album sales by selling concert tickets and different kinds of merch like t-shirts, socks, underwear, cups, lollipops, and throw an album in there. And even along with a copy of their album. Charts will then count these merch sales as album sales. However, BTS's main strategy to get their number one albums and songs is to focus on music sales, real sales. BTS has never bundled their albums with any kind of merchandise or concert tickets. Their biggest sin, which the industry loves to point out, is the fact that they release a maximum of four versions of an album. But these were only special occasions. The norm for BTS is to release two versions of an album, something completely harmless if you compare it to the insane sales tactics truly, by other music labels. And they we're buying it. Encouraged to buy two or four versions of the same album because they come with a unique photo card is nothing compared to K-pop singers releasing seven or thirteen versions of the same album. Wow. BTS's two or four versions of an album don't have the purpose to maximize album sales or they would be way cheaper. BTS's album versions are intended to actually make money, and their number of versions usually has something to do with the album's it's meaningful. concept. If they think one version of an album is enough to capture the album's concept, then they will release only one version. If the album's concept works better in two opposite works, then they release two versions. It's as simple as that. Another common practice to maximize sales is to release remixes of a song. All of these remixes, sales, and streams will be combined and help the main song climb in music charts. BTS very occasionally releases multiple remixes of a song, and armies buy these remixes to help BTS stay on the charts. Yeah, and there's nothing they wrong with that. literally zero points from radio. That's what I'm saying. We're still buying. But while BTS is being criticized by the industry for these remix tactics, yeah, fuck you. other artists are celebrated and called smart and iconic for doing exactly the same. The industry and multiple fandoms think they are doing something by accusing armies of mass buying BTS albums and songs, without realizing that by doing so, they are admitting that the quote unquote organic hits from the charts are there with industry support and Thank not you. fandom support. What is better than a fucking fan buying a motherfucking album from an artist? There's literally nothing more to do to support them. You see what I'm saying? Like that's that's what get me is like, how are you gonna sit here and rag on people? Yeah, maybe I bought every single remix on iTunes and Amazon and the Weverse platform. 
you know, maybe I did do that. Maybe I went out and bought the physicals as well. Maybe I bought a couple different versions of the album, bitch. Because I love them. How is that fake? How is that wrong? How is that bad at all? Bruh. The industry and multiple fandoms criticize and laugh at BTS for not having radio points when they have no control over that. They will have to pay for that just like every other artist is doing. Exactly. The industry and multiple fandoms criticize and laugh at armies for mass buying when all they're doing is balance the unfair treatment by the industry. If BTS they're just mad because their faves have 3,000 in sales and BTS has 115,000 for the week. You know, back in the day when you used to have to buy music, you used to have to go to the store and get an album every time it came out. That would really be the most true, authentic way to show the charts for me. Like there's no other point, streams, radio play, etc., that even compares to a purchase of an album or a song digitally. To me, it's crazy that they have the audacity to laugh when you look at the charts and you see that you sold 2.9 thousand units this week and BTS sold 115,000. And you're like, well, they're not getting radio play. Yeah, because you're losing money by not getting sales and only getting streams and you're losing money by paying it to the radio stations to get the plays that are not organic. Who is the fool in this situation? It's not BTS. BTS is not willing to pay for radio, which is illegal, or pay for playlisting in the streaming platforms, then armies will buy every copy of BTS music available. BTS depends on their fandom and their fandom only. That's what terrifies the industry. Exactly. BTS are able to stay on the charts while actually making money from their music. That money goes to the BTS members and their Korean label, while the Western music industry receives nothing. Even the distribution deal BTS has with an American label benefits BTS more than it benefits the American label. So the label prioritizes their actual signed artists and dismisses BTS. That's what makes the industry mad. That's why the industry has ridiculed them so much that fandoms have convinced themselves that BTS are the corrupt ones instead of being the against all odds winners in a corrupt industry. Thank and you, this say is it the again. The industry being petty. Other fandoms are convinced that the general public support is better than fandom support because that is, according to the industry, organic success. But as you can see, there is nothing organic about these tactics. There is nothing organic about an industry choosing its own success says stories and sabotaging the ones overcoming their unfair obstacles. What is organic is having a fan base of real people actually buying and streaming the music. You can see these millions of real people go to one tour. Yeah, thank Some you. The majority of the number one artists and quote unquote <sighs> million sellers Cannot. Can y'all see Jack Harlow selling out a stadium like that? Maybe. Maybe if he was doing one or two shows. But BTS will put on multiple shows. No. It's n no. Accomplish. The general public may be tricked into streaming a song. They may follow a music trend on TikTok, but they are not always willing to buy expensive concert No, tickets. nobody's going to see Megan Trainor like that. On and forgets. But an army of fans is able to make an album or song successful without the artist paying for industry support. Real organic success is when an artist transforms the general public into fans. And that's what BTS does with every release. The fandom's numbers only go up. This is clearly reflected in the percentage of fans who consider themselves only ARMY. The majority of BTS fans are not K-pop fans. The majority of BTS fans are part of the general public. And it is easily understandable when you look at the fandom's waves of new fans and realize that they have nothing to do with K-pop and everything to do with BTS's performance. Exactly. So why would an artist the talent. have the momentary passive support from the general public when it could have the constant uh. active support from a fandom? Why would artists prefer a theater or arena concert with people who only know their one or two TikTok hits instead of a sold-out stadium S with people who know all of their songs? And are singing it usually in another language, bitch. That's what gets me. Not only is BTS selling out full arenas, they're doing it in multiple countries that don't speak the language. And don't get me wrong, this is gonna sound very bad, but when an English person goes across seas, I feel like that is a different story because English is a language that like, I just feel as, this is gonna sound horrible and I don't mean it like this, but more universal when it comes to music. Do you know what I'm saying? So when an English artist goes anywhere around the world, yeah, the, the, the rest of the world will be singing in English, but who you know can come from Korea to the United States and have a whole group of English speaking people singing in Korean? Who else can do it like that? I mean, I will say there are people like Bad Bunny, even Psy. You know, there's there's other groups and solo artists that have done that before, but not this consistently. Not only growing and getting bigger. Fuck. <laughs> Why is constantly convincing the general public to be your fan not organic success? Oh, I know I have to know. 
I think it's very hypocritical for fandoms to cry about how the charts have no meaning anymore every time BTS gets a number one. Yet, they love celebrating the number ones from other artists who got there with weird tactics to say the least. If now anyone can fool the charts and what BTS is doing is so easy, then why are more artists getting number ones only with why? sales? Why are the charts irrelevant only when BTS succeeds in them? And don't get me wrong, the charts are obviously corrupt. The obvious message they try to send every time BTS gets a number one shows how aware they are of their corruption. The obvious humiliation from the industry's actions in media articles show how the industry doesn't care at all about their little mafia getting exposed. They don't care because they know that the general public will keep falling for their tactics. The general public will still believe that a song they don't even like is organically successful because they've listened to it on the radio hundreds of times. The general public will still believe that their accidental monthly stream in Spotify doesn't count much. Fandoms will still believe that what's best for their favorite artists is the industry and the general public support rather than their own fandom buying the music and concert tickets. But every time ARMY helps BTS succeed in the same music industries that sabotage them, they prove a point. And no matter what the industry does, BTS will make money with no American music label in between and not shaking hands with industry people. No matter what the industry does, BTS will continue having the fandom support others fail to conquer. Bora, preach it, Bora, yes! Uh, once again, such a thought-provoking and amazing set of evidence here from Bora City Magazine. We knew all these things, but just to see it all set out again, written out with evidence and receipts, it just makes you so angry to know what BTS has to go through compared to everybody else and the fact that BTS still gets looked down upon like they're the ones doing something wrong. No, it's your fans that don't buy your music, and that's why they have to have crazy y'all. I don't have a CD player. I do. Thank you to the person that sent it to me in my PO box. Honestly, I do, really do have it here and I've used it a couple times, but I didn't have one before. I said, I don't have a CD player. You know what I mean? I don't have a CD player in my car. This is because I love these bitches. This is because I gotta do what I gotta do because I love them and I love the effort they put into every album, whether it's the concept, the design of it, every single song on there. You see what I'm saying? Like it's, it's about the love. It's not about, we're just buying this because we want to buy this. And honestly, kudos to other people that do that for their fandoms. We do it because we love BTS and that's what I'm just gonna end it and say it. I'm tired right now, you know, honestly. <laughs> Bora City Magazine videos make me so happy and make me so angry for the rest of the day because all I can think about is like radio play, seeing 0.1% on gym ends over here. I'm like, fucking be for real. I hate everybody. I love everybody. Whatever. BTS are the people of this generation. They're the Elvis. They're the Beatles. They're all of that. Please keep that in mind. And I'm not going to change my mind about that. So I love you all so much. Thank you again, Bora City, for such an amazing video. I hope I get to do another one soon. But until then, remember, click like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe down below and I love ya. Bye. I would love to know them by name. So.